Hello everyone, welcome to session 6 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp. And in this session, we will talk about decision trees and ensemble learning. And the project we will do this week is credit risk scoring. So imagine that you want to buy a mobile phone. So what you do is you come to a bank. Let's say this is a bank. This is my mobile phone you want to buy. Right. You come to a bank and you want to get a loan to buy this mobile phone. You fill in some application form that asks um, some basic statistics about you, like about your income, how much this item costs, how much money you need to buy this item, whether you own a house uh, or whether you rent a house, how much money you have in general, how much money you earn, how much experience you have, things like this. So you fill in this application and send it to the bank and you ask for money. And then the bank look at this application and they say, okay, here you go. So they say yes, or they can say no, sorry, we are not giving you any money. And bank is doing this by analyzing the application you filled in and by analyzing what they know about you already. What we want to do in this lesson is we want to build a model that um, the bank can use to actually make this decision if they should lend the money or not. And the bank can give this to the model, how much money they want to, to lend and so on. And what the model will respond with will be, what is the risk that this customer is not going to pay back? And this is called default. So the model will return the probability or risk that this customer is uh, going to default. Risk of defaulting. And then the bank can use this service to make a decision whether to lend the money to the customer or not. And the way we can do this uh, as a bank, the way we can uh, build this model is we can analyze all the customers we have, all the historical data we have. So we have some information about the customers and about the, their applications. So we have a lot of history like that. And then for each of these applications, we know how much money they asked and whether they were able to pay back the loan or not. So for example, this customer was able to pay back the loan this customer was able to pay back the loan, but this one didn't. They defaulted. So they say, okay, sorry, I don't have any money. Uh, there is nothing uh, I can pay you with. And this is the situation the bank wants to avoid. Uh, let's say this one is also default and this one is okay. Right. So what we have here is we have a binary classification problem where Y in our case, like it's a binary, can be zero or one. Zero in this case is uh, okay, and one is default. And we want to train a model that uh, for each new customer gives us the probability that this customer is going to default. So what we want to do is we want to train a model, model G for a new customer will give us probability of default. So what we have here, so this is our training data set. So we have um, y here. So this is our target variable. And we have our x here. And x is all the information about the users that we have, which includes their income, the price of the item, and things like this. So basically all the information that we have on the application that the clients make, plus some of the information we already know about the customer if they are our clients already. This is what our features are. And this is what we will use to predict if a new customer is going to be able to pay back the loan or they're going to default. And uh, the data set we will use for that is um, this. So I have a link here. So this data set is called credit scoring. And this is, uh, so here's this data, creditscoring.cc. So we have here and all this information and status is actually if they defaulted or not. And let me just go back. Uh, there is a description of what each column means. So here status is credit status, status default or not. Then what we also have is uh, seniority is like how many years of experience they have, whether they own a home or not, uh, uh, for how long they have the loan, the age of the client, the marital status, if they have, um, so I think this is one is if they have prior history of um, taking credit with this one. I'm not sure about this one, to be honest, but I think this is that. And then um, like this is uh, the kind of job they have, uh, how much money they spend, how much money they earn, how much money they have in general, how much money they owe now. So how much debt they have already and how much 
money they requested and how much uh, the price of the thing they want to buy a phone for example this data set was used for some data mining course this is quite good so it's not a very large data set and this week we'll use this data set for experimenting with three models um, this is the notebook we we'll use We'll first take a look at the data set in the next lesson. Then we'll talk about decision trees. So decision tree is a special algorithm that learns rules from the data set, like if then else rules. So we will uh, see how to use such an algorithm and uh, we'll see how to use the existing implementation. Then we will talk about how the decision tree algorithm uh, works, how decision trees are able to learn these rules. Then um, they have some parameters. We'll see how to tune these parameters. And then in lesson six, we will see what happens if we put many, many different trees together. We get a forest, a random forest model, and we'll see how to do this, how to combine multiple decision trees together. And uh, there is a different way of combining decision trees together called gradient boosting. And there is a library that implements that called XGBoost. We will cover this as well in lesson seven and lesson eight. And um, then finally, we'll select the best model. And this is what we are going to do this week. So, and in the next lesson, we will talk about this data set, we will uh, prepare the data and we will do a bit of cleaning. See you soon.